Hey everybody, I'm Hendrin and welcome to EduK Way Studio. Today we'll be talking about underglazes. I'm going to show you some of the techniques that I use when I'm painting with my underglazes and also how to use underglaze powder. And I've also got some dry underglaze that's been standing for a while. And as we all know, underglazes are really expensive. So we'd like to reuse as much of it as we can and not waste. So I'm just going to show you how we can fix this problem. It's like, yeah, completely dry. So let's open this. As you can see, it's like, it's rock hard. So I'm first just going to take the back of a paintbrush and just crush it a little. Just to get it a little refined. Add some water, just a little bit at a time, not too much. We don't want to thin out our underglaze too much because then obviously it's not going to work. I'm just stirring it a little. Ooh, this gray is old. I think I've had it for a few years, but I keep reusing it. Gray is not a color that I use often. I usually just mix my black and white in a separate little container and use that. So this gray was pre-mixed long ago. Oh, workout. So it's already like liquidy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sieve it. Because there's a lot at the bottom here that's stuck. So yeah, if your underglazes are old, don't worry. When I started using underglazes, I always thought that they were exactly the same as using acrylic and oil paints. This is not the case. As soon as that paint hits the surface of the clay, it dries out. So blending is a little bit difficult, so I'm going to show you how to do that. I have this little elephant vase that I made the other day. I actually did a video on it as well carving it out. I'm going to be using rub and this is only under glaze powder. I haven't added any water or glaze silica to it to, to make it combine so that it sticks properly. This is just the powder itself. So I'll show you how to use that and I'm going to use this to decorate. I was going to use oxide but then I was like nah let's use the powder. And how we do this is you can see there's powder, but some of it's still a little wet at the bottom. I'm just going to take a brush and just mix the powder a little. I'm going to take water, but just a little, and add it in. You'll see because you haven't added like frit or the silica that it's not really the same consistency, and that's fine. It's like loopy. Not added too much water, just a little. Now what I'm going to do is, let's take Mr. Ailey and I'm going to paint it on. The problem we have here is that it's way too thick. It's not going into the grooves of the elephant. How to solve this problem and not waste? We leave it to dry for a little bit. I'm going to leave that side. I'll do the other side. I'm going to add a little bit more water. Let's try this again. Stir. Luckily, when you're using rub, it's easily fixable. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start on the other side. Whoop, that's a lot better. It's not as thick. And it's going into the grooves. What I'm going to do is paint the whole thing. Very rough. You do not have to be neat, guys. I'm painting on leather hard, so this has not been bisqued. You can do it on bisque, but it's a lot messier. And also, if you dip it in the glaze, all that under glaze is going to go off and go into your glaze and you don't want that because it's powdery. The sponge has to be dry. If it's not, you're going to have problems and it's going to be like a sticky mess. So only part of it's gone into the grooves. I'm working on a plank so every little bit of powder that is falling off I can collect later. So this is quite a messy job. Because I'm putting this all over, there will be brown across the entire vase but that's what I want. Gonna give it quite a nice effect. 
So there, so much mess. Now, when it starts drying, I can start wiping. I always wipe up. Oxides tend to drip. So if you have a, a vase like this and you put oxides in your grooves, when you wipe your oxide to get it into the grooves, you will wipe up because otherwise the oxide will drip down. But luckily with underglazes, it's not the same. They're designed to not drip in the kiln, which is fantastic. This makes me very happy. Happy with that. So what I'll do is I'm going to paint him now. I'm just going to clean up a little because this is a huge mess. So he's happily in his little sponge bed. Boop, 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 boop. Nice and soft. So the trick about underglazes is your light colors are underneath and your dark colors go on top because if you put dark color first like black and I paint white over black you may think oh it's going to come out white. Not necessarily. It may come out a little bit more gray or the black may just completely shine through and you won't see anything. So I've taken the same color that is the mahogany that I used for the lines. I've added a little bit of white just to make it a little bit lighter so I'll be painting the elephant with this. So smooth strokes, the smoother your strokes, the smoother your lines. That's why I keep mine pretty watery, well not too watery, it must still be able to go on the clay and not run because then it blends a lot easier. The pressure I'm putting on the clay when I'm brushing is not a lot. <laughs> washed down layers and then at the top when you start coloring and adding just do it little by little. I know you can't see much now but when it comes out of the kiln it'll actually have a bit more color on the sides. So that's just how if you know you have to learn your underglazes and know what colors come out when you do what. So the eye's not dry yet so I'm not going to even attempt to touch it. I think it should be fine. I'm just going to go another layer on the ear. And there he is. I just need to do the other side. You can actually add more depth with the watercolors depending on your shading of how much you want. I don't want to add too much because this may look really dark right now. But once I put glaze, well once it's gone into the bisque and then comes out and then I glaze it, it actually comes out a lot lighter. Here's an example of a cheese platter that I did uh, a few years ago. And... The lines I carved out and I actually put rub in it and then also painted it like I'm doing with this one. So it works out quite well. A lovely French couple bought it and said they were going to take it home to France. Very appropriate considering it's cheese. <laughs> so I'm all done here. Very happy with my little jar. He's going to look pretty cool. Did the other side as well. But yeah. Thanks for tuning in guys. Hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye. Oh,